Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with pathfinding by having our humanoid model jump over obstacles if there's no other way to get in. So what we did for our maze is just added a barrier in the front here so that there's no other ways to get in. And what our player is going to do now is jump over that barrier to get to the red part. And we can see it's going toward the barrier and then it jumps over. All right, so let's see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the script that we wrote last time. This is the script that we had last time, which created a path from the humanoid model to the red finish part. However, if we try to run the script with our new maze that has a blocked off entrance, we'll see the player try to get to the part, but then he stops right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we see the path is drawn out, but once the player model gets to the entrance, it just stops there because it doesn't know to jump over the wall. So what we can do to fix that is down here for the for loop where we have the player movement. What we're going to add is a check to see whether the player needs to jump or not. And we can do that by saying if waypoint dot action is equal to enum dot path waypoint action dot jump then what we're going to do is we're going to say humanoid colon change state inside the parentheses we're going to put enum dot humanoid state type dot jumping so basically what this is doing is each waypoint in the list of positions right here it has an action associated with it, either a jump or a walk. And we're just checking to see if that particular position has the action of jump. And if it does have an action of jump, then what we're going to do is change the humanoid state equal to jumping. So now let's go and run it again and take a look. And now we see as it goes toward the red part, it no longer gets stuck, but jumps over the wall. Okay, and the next thing we're going to work on is having this humanoid model track the red part as it moves on the screen. To do that, let's go ahead and head to our script. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete the section right here. All this section does is kind of illustrates the path that the player moves toward, but it's not really necessary for the movement. The next thing I'm going to do is enclose this section right here in a while true loop. So I'm going to say while true do, and then I'm going to indent the section right here, and then put an N for my while loop. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust this for loop right here. And instead of having the player model go through the whole list of points before it recalculates the path, I'm just going to have it go through the first five points and then recalculate. So to do that, I'm going to delete this section right here. And I'm going to say for i starting at 1 and going to 5. And then we need to change these. So now we're going to reference the list and index it at i. And then I also need to change it right here as well. After that, just like we saw for the parts, we need to be careful that we don't run into indexing errors. So what we're going to do to fix that and make sure it doesn't happen is we're going to say if i is less than or equal to the length of waypoints, then we'll do the code. So I'm just going to indent this and then put an end for my if statement. And there we go. So let's go ahead and see how this looks now. Okay, so now my player model is moving toward the red part. If I move it toward a new location, then he goes toward that red part. And as I move it around the screen, then he tracks that red part. If I move it back inside the maze, then he'll try to jump over walls to get to it. Oops, it looks like my wall fell off. All right, so this is going to be the end of this tutorial. We'll do more with pathfinding in the future. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.